Hey guys, SFP here, and welcome to episode number 40 of my FIFA 15 DC United career mode. And this is actually episode 2 of my daily upload for today, which is Sunday. Um, and remember, guys, that Monday being Labor Day, uh, I'm also going to be doing a double upload. So expect two episodes coming out tomorrow as well. Um, we're going to make a couple changes here before we f uh, face the Philadelphia Union. Um, I'm trying to rotate some players. I'm trying to give some players playing time, especially those players that are unhappy, like my youngsters here. Uh, Davey Arno obviously is unhappy. He's been very unhappy, actually. Um, and I believe also uh, Jared Jeffries probably been very unhappy as well. Anyways, guys, I'm going to plug in my stuff here uh, very early here. Um, follow me, guys, on Twitter at SFP Soccer Show. Please follow my other channel, Soccer Fan Perspective, where I basically give my opinions, my two cents, on stuff that's happening uh, in the soccer world, particularly MLS and the U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, but obviously, soccer, or football, I should say, is a global sport, so I'm going to put in a couple things here. Uh, I know at some point I want to put in a group analysis for the uh, Europe, uh, not Europa, excuse me, the UEFA Champions League. I know for a fact that I will be doing a small video on the U.S. versus Peru friendly that I actually got to see live. So uh, stay tuned in for that one. I'll probably leave my, uh, excuse me, the link for my other channel in the description down below, or I'll probably also post it here in the video somewhere. Um, but I'll probably definitely do it in the comment section. I don't know if that'll affect you guys. I don't know if you guys like to see links on videos. I, I know it kind of bugs me a little bit because it, it takes away from the experience and takes away from the viewing pleasure. So I'll, I'll see what I do about it. But there's gonna be something uh, that'll link you to that description. Uh, directly. Anyways, you see here that we're going to put Cooper, uh, our fullback here, or not fullback, our center back youngster, as a holding midfielder because he actually can't play this, that position as well. And we see here that we seal the ball from the Philly fan, Philly uh, player, but it seems that Maidana is injured, um, and it's an unfortunate injury. It doesn't. It didn't seem like. It didn't seem too serious, guys. But I guess it was just enough. Maybe it was just like an ankle thing or something. Hopefully. Uh, he'll be back uh, sooner than we think. And here we see a nice swerve there by Luperto. Luperto's going to go by himself. He's going to take the shot. But his shot wasn't as smooth as him weaving through the defenders, unfortunately, for us. Anyways, guys, we see here that Philly uh, put the ball back in play. But here we see Luperto again. Luperto... Like I said, he's one of our speedier players. He's going to go all on his own. He's going to take the shot. And I think I just waited a little too long, guys. I, I've i had issues scoring. And so, for some reason, by default, my brain just wants to get as close to the goal as possible uh, to assure myself mentally. And, and it's not always the case. It's not always the closest shot that's uh, the winner, the one that goes in. But for some reason, uh, the fact that I've been unfortunate in my shooting I keep wanting to get as close as possible and then just basically blasting it in the goal. But it's moments like that where basically the goalkeeper has a better opportunity of saving it because they're going to shorten all the goal itself. And so um, for some reason I have to get off that mentality. And here we see that uh, the Philly actually has a great opportunity by Andrew Winger and he just skies it. It was a great opportunity. Uh, luckily, my defender there, Crow, I think could have managed to save it, but uh, the fact that it was uh, a horrible shot in itself is, is good enough for us, guys. And we see here a great opportunity through uh, Lahoud, but Gajese comes up big, and that's save number two. Uh, like I said, guys, again, multiple times, our goalkeepers are awesome, and they're going to have to be awesome because everything else apparently sucks at the moment. Uh, so we're going to have to depend on them very very uh, crucially and now that I think about it it's kinda like real DC where DC is basically all Bill Hamid uh, and it actually goes on his hands whether or not uh, DC comes with a victory or a tie anyways we see here that I'm gonna make a couple of changes I'm gonna take out Cooper because Cooper's uh, stamina is horrible at the moment which is I think the norm with all these uh, youngsters coming out from the academies uh, they're not exactly the quickest of players unless uh, you're scouting for wingers, I guess. Uh, I think that's the only case I've seen where uh, they actually have a pretty decent amount of pace. And we see here that uh, the Philadelphia Union is going to put it back in play. They're going for the attack. Andrew Wenger is all alone. He's going to go for the shot. No, he goes for the back pass. And again, we manage to avoid a very dangerous situation with Michael Lahoud, who 
in all fairness, should have had a goal by now. He had two good opportunities, and both of them have been wasted. And uh, obviously, CJ Sapong is very disappointing because he served in on a platter, and Bill, uh, Bill I mean, Michael Lahoud uh, couldn't finish it. And we see here, guys, that this uh, game itself is actually going to be fairly short. There wasn't too many occasions, um, too many shots on goal, too many dangerous opportunities. And so um, that basically makes this video particularly short as we're here in what I believe is the last attack here for Philly. And that's how the game's going to end, guys, 0-0. And so far, I think we've been winless in the last three to four games. And that is not a good thing, especially in MLS where teams can catch up to you. Um, and I know at some point we're going to see the standings, and, and you'll see what I mean. Now right here, look, we're actually, uh, at a quick glance, we're in fifth place at the moment, which is the last position that we are allowed to be in in order to qualify. And here, guys, I think is when I decided to make a couple of the changes here. And uh, as you guys have seen previously, uh, many of my players are unhappy. Um, so I'm going to have to make big changes at the moment. I'm going to sell Dykstra. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just because I believe he deserves to get more playing time and obviously he's not going to get it here and I'm going to loan out Gajese uh, just for the fact that uh, I think I'm hindering his growth putting him on the bench. I'm also going to take care of a couple of my defenders here. I have a whole stack of center backs most of which I do not need. Um, and obviously Araujo and Kagna I do want to keep so I'm going to put them on loan. Yeah, actually, I'm going to put him on the I don't know why I wanted to transfer. I think it's because of the fact that I have Cooper on our team already. And Cooper is going to outgrow any of these center backs fairly quickly. And I have another center back uh, in uh, Fail Harbor, who's basically about the same. He's going to start off at the at the sixty mid-60s level. And him being at least an exciting prospect or showing great potential... He, he, as well as Cooper, will grow immensely. And so um, I'm probably going to end up shepherding them here. And this was a tough decision for me, getting rid of Arno because Arno, uh, while he isn't exactly the best player in DC United, there's something about him, maybe his character, his grit, his fight, something about him just stands out in the team. And it's something that we need. It's something uh, in the extent of, I guess, his leadership and how he... Uh, portrays himself or, or uh, uh, displays himself on the field and so I think originally I decided to put him on loan but I think at some point in this video or in the next one uh, I think I the best option is to just let him go because he's not going to get any better um, and I don't think he's retiring anytime soon actually so we're going to actually play our first game or not our first game but the next game against uh, the LA Galaxy, which again is another one of our uh, pseudo rivals, I should say. I, I consider them a rival, um, but uh, technically the Red Bulls are our only rivals. And I'm wondering how the whole situation with New York City FC is, is going to happen. Our, uh, just the fact that they're in New York, uh, does that mean we're going to have another New York uh, rivalry with them? I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it's just the first season. And you know, people say uh, rivalries uh, should basically be made uh, while they play on the field, they shouldn't be staged or try to set up you know which is basically what they've been doing um because they say you know new york galaxy is, is a is a derby i don't think it's a derby per se um but it's still an exciting game to watch and as we see here uh, the lineup here for the la galaxy nothing uh, too interesting in particular though they got terrence boyd that actually caught my eye guys the uh, u.s international terrence boyd uh, is back in the galaxy so that's actually fairly well I'm not sure how the EA or the I yeah the IA actually pulled that off, but that is amazing. Uh, the fact that they brought in uh, a US striker back, which is something that the Galaxy would do, um, by the way, which is which is what makes it a nice little feature here. Um, and here we have our B team, which I'm not sure um, was the right choice, but considering I've been playing my A team a lot, uh, they obviously need a break here. And speaking about a break, LA Galaxy with the first break here in the game. And a weird setup here that will lead to the first goal by none other than Terrence Boyd. And that was just, that, that just caught us off, guys. That just caught us off guard. What a nice shot, though, I gotta say. That, the, that's the thing of beauty. Even the best angle, ironically, is the goalkeeper angle, which should really hurt me, uh, considering we're being scored on. But it's just such a beautiful goal. Such a nice setup. 
that it, it's it's hard not to appreciate. And that's his first goal in MLS, so I'm assuming he was a summer transfer. Because I don't think him being in the starting 11 here with Galaxy, um, he should have more than one goal. Basically is what I'm saying. Anyways, we see here with uh, Bobby Balls is going to pass it to Luperto. Luperto sees two of our strikers here open. Zalalem's going to go for the ball. He's going to run. He's going to run. He's going to go for the shot. But again, it's that one little second that I take extra. That extra second that I take is what's like limiting my our shot shooting opportunities, guys. And again, I, I take it back to the fact that my shooting hasn't been uh, up to par, so to speak. And so I, I, I mentally, subconsciously have this urge to go straight to goal. And that's something I'm going to have to fight off because otherwise we're not going to get any good opportunities. And speaking of good opportunities, uh, here is another one for the LA Galaxy. But luckily, uh, nothing comes from it. And we see here that guy just going to put it back. And now we cut back to the Galaxy with uh, Garcia, Garcia de Villarreal, Villarreal, the youngster, the U.S. international. Passes it to Garcia again. Garcia's going to pass it to Terrence Boyd. Terrence Boyd, uh, the, the author of the first goal, passes it to Rivera. Rivera to Juninho. Juninho back to Rivera. Rivera with the shot. And although the shot, nothing came from it, the setup, the tiki-taka, the way Galaxy has been playing um, is basically showing their class and how much better they are than us, guys. And I don't know if you guys spotted that, but they have 66%. We only have 30 30 uh, ish percent so obviously there's only one team on the field right now and it's the LA Galaxy and here we have Juninho Juninho uh, passes it to uh, Copete Copete passes it to Boyd Boyd's gonna go pass it to Garcia Garcia uh, no one's really man marking him at the moment he has so much space he passes it back to Boyd Boyd passes it to Garcia Garcia goes by his defender Boyd goes for the header but the header is weakening as Jesse gets it very smoothly and here we go with our own counter attack that nothing happened, obviously, because I just cut that and edited that out. Anyways, here we have another counterattack yet again uh, for the LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy passes it to Garcia. Garcia passes it to Boyd. Boyd again with a great opportunity. Uh, Bill Hamid saves. Gajese uh, saves the first one, and he saves the second one as well. So, so far, our man of the match is Gajese, um, which is not good, guys, because when your, def your goalkeeper is the best player on your team, then you clearly have issues. And here we see that Longo, I wanted to go for the fancy pass, um, and uh, I think that did it for me that the fact that I went for that pass instead of the shot is, is what uh, denied me the opportunity to get the equalizer. And here we have Longo again. Longo is actually going to go for the shot this time, but nothing <laughs> nothing he can do against that defensive effort there by the defender. And here again we see Galaxy doing their thing. Copete passes to Juninho. Juninho is going to pass it to Villarreal. Villarreal is going to pass it uh, back to Juninho. But that's game, guys. That's a 1-0 loss again. We've been having a horrible momentum at the moment. And uh, that's it for this episode, guys. See you tomorrow for the double uploads.